much Beverly. This is what it does to you. Whirlwind of Road Trips, episode 10. Yeah. So, 10. We're on 10. Actually, we've put up, we've filmed more. I just haven't edited them yet. So this really is more than 10, but I'll probably put them up, this one up before the rest. So we're gonna say episode 10. And we are currently in Henderson County, North Carolina, going down the back road of Highway 64. And then we're going to be turning onto, I believe, 74. And going into, we might be going into Rutherford County before we get to Polk County. I can't remember. We might just be in Polk County. And then we'll be on 108. So lots of back roads and interesting things to show you guys. Now in the township of Edneyville. And I'm going to show you. Look. This one's actually kind of recently painted like corn. They've had the pumpkin silo painted like this for a while. This is like apple country, um, as you can see, lots of apples. So a lot of apple orchards here in Edneyville, North Carolina. Ooh, pink food trucks new. So right up here at the Blue Ridge Humane Society, is where Disney came from. The girls were volunteering there and they've been volunteering for a couple months. I'm actually surprised it took that long before they called and said, oh, you have to come see this dog. You have to come see this dog. And yep, brought home Disney that day. Not that we were looking for a dog. We already had two, a Dixie and Traveler. But, yeah, we couldn't resist cute little Disney. And just after the Humane Society, we crossed the Eastern Continental Divide, elevation 2,236 feet. And now we're headed back down the other side on the windy and curvy country road. So we're doing the nice thing. We pulled over to let that vehicle, oh my gosh. Look at that old pram. Old pram sitting there, wow. All right, anyway, what I was saying, we pulled over so that um, a vehicle that was behind us could go because we kind of want to go slower than we've been going so that we can like actually get footage for you guys. We have just entered Bat Cave, North Carolina. Yep, it is called Bat Cave. For a second the shop was open which hasn't been open I think in years but um a lot of these cars are parked here for some reason oh looks like we got they just opened the door they're redoing the flooring or something in there interesting that private property okay so we're not going to get out here because it says private property but and they actually have this little bridge roped off and a tour so that you can't get up there it's a nice little bridge customer parking only so oh they do have they are selling some apples and stuff right now some jams and some birdhouses. That did not come over because of the sun and the glare back then. 
look at the size of those rocks. Oh my gosh, that is just scary. Angler parking only. Uh, I thought it said angle parking only. Yeah. Wow. Whoa, you need to look at the road and not the mountains. The mountains are cool. is the Chimney Rock State Park. You can kind of see it way up there with the flag. Just found a very important thing. There are public bathrooms in Chimney Rock. So it is 2.47 on January 8th. So pretty cold where we are. But look at this, there's still bukus of people visiting the area. Whoa, what is with that rock wall? Huh, very interesting, unique shape there. Popcorn factory and pizza by the slice, huh? Yeah, but not opened and deep fried Twinkies. Now I realize what the wall was. It's the other side of the chimney rock wall. Okay, oh, I get it. it. Is up there. You see it? Yep. All right. Ooh, this is a cool picture. We found Smokey the Bear. Tom wants ice cream. Yes, as cold as it is, he wants ice cream. I've had no food today other than a kind bar, and he wants ice cream. Look, they have a moon pie sundae. Are you taking pictures of the Looney Tunes gumball machine? Gotcha. Oh wow, I just saw this. This, thank you. This is the best tip jar ever. Tippy is not just for cows. We both just got shakes. What one did you get? Oh dear. Bourbon. Brown butter, bourbon, caramel, something or another. And I got um, just chocolate chip cookie dough. So we stopped at the Village Scoop. Now we're gonna head back to the vehicle and keep on driving. Oh, wait a minute. I see one other thing I wanna show you. I see some Sasquatches. Is that how you say it? Sasquatches. Some Bigfoots. There we go. Bigfoots. These things bouncing in the window got my attention. Those are so cute. Is this free? Or do you put in money? It, it's got a coin slot. Oh, yep. It's got a coin slot. Look. Pointing right up there to the rock. The kids have actually done gym mining here at this place before. They were younger. I'd like to point out for the record that uh, this afternoon it is a balmy 38 degrees here in Chimney Rock Village. And we bypassed right next door 
to where we went, a perfectly good hot coffee shop that was open and decided to get milkshakes anyway. Oh, but that was cute. We should have went in there. We just don't have time. All right, guys, don't despair. We will be doing a uh, chimney rock video at some point when it gets a tad bit warmer. And we actually, oh yeah, we actually do have like, we're on destination. Like we're, oh, hi Santa. Um, we have a destination that we have to get to uh, by 4.30, so little bit of a um, time schedule here. We have now entered Lake Lure. Yes, that does sound familiar, doesn't it? Because part of Dirty Dancing was filmed in Lake Lure, North Carolina. Now, I was by here a couple weeks ago and basically there was no lake left. And there is still no lake. Oh wow. Look at that. It is basically dry. All right, we're going to have to like stop and like actually. Fix. Look at that. The lake is gone. There's nothing. I mean, normally there's water in here. I'm a little distressed that at a public beach like this, they don't have lifeguards in the lifeguard stands today. <laughs> wow. Ooh, I didn't realize that they had a uh, water slide here now. Oh, they do. But they do. Oh, that would be really uncomfortable. That right there looks like a giant snake. It's not, but it... Ooh, I can smell all the mud now. I just got a whiff of, like, mud. This looks weird. With these pipes sticking out here, are th is that an in or an out? I'm taking it those are intakes for the water slide over here. Ah, yes, that is probably exactly what it is. I know there's going to be a glare. Sorry about that. But here at Lake Lore, they have a Japan house. This is an extremely curvy road. If you get car sick, this is not the road for you to be on. Nope. Look, a straight section. <laughs> we are now getting on nine south. Wow, I bet there's lots of goodies in here. Would love to be able to walk in there. It's a shame though to see something go into this disrepair. The end has collapsed over there. Uh, yep. Oh wow, Tom's drooling over Good here. Job, boy. You got to get over here anyway. He is a drooling. And then we have some other cool ones. But this kind of reminds me of the Back to the Future the Galaxy van. Man, we got some classic cars. Look at this. Fancy, smancy. Wow. Oh. There, Thunderbird. Yep. And we are now turning on to 108. Ooh, look at that old, probably like gas station general store. 
This yarn dyeing plant opened in the 1890s and was powered by a dam at the Packlot River. Now, here's an interesting fact. Boys as young as 12 would work there. And here's another cute tidbit. The land next to the mill was a pasture. Men that worked there were allowed to bring their cows with them to work and leave them in the pasture during their shift. For a while, there was a man that lived in a house at the back of the mill and his job was to tend to the coal-fired boilers. And he did this for 24 hours a day. And then at some point they went over to natural gas and when the plant closed it was using about $30,000 of natural gas a month. At one point in the early 2000s the mill was so busy it was operating seven days a week. But when Collins and Aikman Corporation, which was an automobile fabrics company, filed for bankruptcy in 2005, the plant took a big hit. They had sold that company over 2 million pounds of dyed yarn over a five-year period. And then unfortunately, shortly thereafter, they lost another big client that was bought by another company who bought their yarn, yep, you guessed it, from overseas. In the 1990s, they had about 125 employees put in color on about 127,000 pounds of yarn a week. Despite cost cutting and whittling staff down to just a mere 30 people, they finally succumbed to the manufacturing downtrend and closed in October of 2007. In 2012 or 13, someone bought the building in hopes of leasing it to a brewery, which is a big thing in Western North Carolina right now. There are a lot of breweries. Um, and he was hoping maybe that brewery would want him to build like a patio along the river. It would just make a great place for that. But that didn't happen. They'd also thrown around ideas of maybe a possible flea market. As you can see, that didn't happen either. And it's a shame. It's really a shame to see a building with so much history in this type of condition. As you can imagine, trying to keep up with a 185,000 square foot empty building that sits on almost five acres was going to be difficult. And the owner... He, you know, he would come down normally on the weekends and he said he would come and sit actually inside the building, watch the river. Um, unfortunately, in June 2018, um, he came in one day and vandals had came in and broke glass, beer bottles all over the place. There used to be furniture in there. I'm going to insert a picture of what it kind of looked like then. This is what the back of the building facing the river um, looked like in about 2018. I'm going to guess it doesn't look that good anymore. try out this little bitty Mexican restaurant here and try on. We're eating early because it's 443 so there's not a lot of people in here which is awesome. So I have a vegetarian meal with a bean taco, spinach enchilada, no spinach burrito and then cheese enchilada. And what did you get over? Rice, beans, and what? Uh, two enchiladas, one beef, one cheese. Okie dokie. I had no idea the marquee actually worked. <gasps> yeah, they're, this is awesome. They're a little behind. Oh my gosh. 
Love old theater marquees. Okay, well, it looks like Tryon still has some of their Christmas lights out. I do know that this little restaurant, Huckleberries, I think it's only open for lunch. It is a very popular place. It is always busy. You know, I actually have an acquaintance that sells fire trucks. I did not know that. He is a retired fireman <laughs> and uh, e like EMS instructor. I have a uh, friend from way back when whose uh, first job out of high school was to drive brand new fire trucks to their new destination. Oh, wow. That's a cool job when you're fresh out of school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for following along on another whirlwind of road trips vlog. These are one of our favorite to produce for you guys. Hope you uh, hit that thumbs up button for us. And remember, adventure awaits. Around the road.